One of the most important elements when we work with the state machine is the inputs. Inputs can be used as conditions and transitions that drive our state machine. Developers can access the inputs via runtime, so using things like JavaScript or Flutter, they can drive the transitions that we set up in our state machine. Now let's look at how to create inputs for our state machine. So here we are in the state machine, and if we go over to this inputs panel here, we can expand this, and this is where we'll be manipulating all of our inputs. We can use the plus button located at the top here to create a new input. You'll see that once we hit the plus button, we have a few different types of inputs that we can create. We can create a number, a Boolean, or a trigger. The first type is a number. You can see that when we select the input, it appears here in our inputs list. Now a number input, as the name indicates, allows me to add or configure some sort of number. We can click on the field and add any number we want, or we can click and drag to change the numerical value. These values can be both positive and negative. We can also double click on the name and rename it. You'll need to come up with a good strategy to name your inputs with your developer. The next type of input is the Boolean input. So we can select that and you'll see once again, it's displayed here in the inputs list. The Boolean input, if you look closely, has this little checkbox here. We can activate it or deactivate it by clicking it. A Boolean can have either a true or false value. While it's unclicked, it would return a false value. And if we click it, then that'll be a true value. This will be important when we start using this input as a condition. The last input is a trigger. And if we select that, you'll see that once again, it's displayed in the inputs panel. Now here we have a little radio button. And when we press it, it marks it momentarily. This is essentially sending a fire signal to our state machine. So like a Boolean, it'll become true, but unlike a Boolean, it can only hold that value for a short time. So we have three types of inputs. The number allows us to enter numbers. Booleans can have a value of true or false. And a trigger can make a quick signal or fire call very quickly. Now we can reorganize our inputs by clicking and dragging them here in the inputs panel. We can delete inputs by right clicking with the mouse button and using the delete option. Or we can hold the alt key, which will open up the little X button and we can click the X to actually get rid of the input. One way that we can organize our inputs, which we'll need to do on larger state machines, is by using this folder icon. When we click the folder icon button, a new folder appears, and a new folder will appear every time we hit the button. These can serve as a great way for us to organize all of our inputs. For example, we could take and put the trigger in one folder, or we could put them all in one folder, or we could split them up into different folders. If a folder has something inside, you'll see this little arrow icon, and we can use that to expand and show us what's inside the folder. We can rename the folder by double-clicking on it and typing in the name of our choice. 